Hello, Tim here with Mars Go Home, and welcome to part two of this VHS deep dive, where we address some color correction, some grain, tape wobbles, and frame edges. Let's jump right into it. In the last video, we prepped our footage, and now it's ready to get all crapified. So let's start with some color correction. Let's create a new adjustment layer, and we're going to name it CC for color correction. Now we're going to put some Lumetri color onto this adjustment layer. Here we need to tweak the colors a bit, and a lot of this is to taste, but referencing some old footage I had, here are some settings I found that work well. Let's open up the basic correction tab and drop the whites all the way down to negative 100. And to compensate, we'll push the highlights up all the way to 100, and our shadows to about 40 to 50. Next, open up the creative, and here we're going to adjust the vibrance. In case you were wondering what the difference between vibrance and saturation is, the simplest explanation is vibrance only touches the muted or flat or the cooler colors of the image. It only affects the less saturated colors on the image. Saturation enhances every color in the image. I'm going to drop the vibrance to about negative 50. This will take some of the bite off the colors. I also noticed that the overall color temperature gradually shifts throughout some older, more worn out tapes. To add that small detail, we're going to jump back into the basic correction and add an expression to the temperature. Let's hold Alt while clicking on the stopwatch and we're going to type in wiggle 3, 20. The first number, 3, defines the number of times the layer will wiggle per second. And in this case, it'll move 3 times in 1 second. The second number, 20, defines how much it will move in any direction. In this case, 20 pixels. So every 3 times a second, it will shift cooler or warmer by 20 pixels. And now let's add our trusty unsharp mask. VHS tapes seem to add some artificial sharpening to the image to help make it less fuzzy. And this will pull out all the edges and make it pop a little bit more. We'll push the amount to 100 and the radius to about 8 and the threshold to 0. Think of the radius kind of like a feather. The bigger the number, the more it falls off. The smaller number, the sharper it falls off. 8 seems to be a good happy place, but we can come back and adjust this later, depending on our working footage. Let's add some grain to this footage. Let's create a solid at 50% gray. And let's name this Grain Full Frame. Now let's put a grain effect on this. Change it to Final Output and drop the intensity down a bit. I prefer to err on the side of too little and make it subtle. So I'll start with 0.3. We're going to come down here and change our blending mode. Change our blending mode to Overlay. And we can always come back and adjust this more. Put more on there or less. Now let's emulate kind of like a stretchy bottom part of the frame. And we're going to do that by taking our adjustment layer and we're going to name this stretchy bottom. Now when you reuse a adjustment layer from uh, solids in the project bin, we need to make sure that we come over here and turn it into an actual adjustment layer. As it stands now, it creates it as a solid. So we need to tell it that it is an adjustment layer. And you can do this with any footage that's in your project timeline. We are going to add a CC simple wire removal effect on here. Now what this does is it gives a point A and a point B. If we zoom in a little bit here, here's a point A and point B. We need to make sure that this point A right here is at this bottom left corner and this point B is at the bottom right corner, at the very, very bottom. And it's best if it's a complete straight line. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna come over here to point A and in the first value, we're gonna make sure this is at zero. This will push it all the way to the side. And we're gonna do the same thing with B, but on this side, if we remember our dimensions, this should be 640. If we come over to point A, this would be zero, and our dimensions is 480. And this, bottom left-hand side, should be 480. Same thing with our point B, 480. We are gonna mirror this 0%, and we will displace this, I don't know, let's say, 20% for now. Come on. Now this might be a good time to switch out our footage a bit. In our replace footage here, we're just going to toss on 
this. And we'll find a good spot, maybe right, right there. Seems good. If we look, we can start seeing just a slight stretch at the very bottom. Now would be a good time to address the edges of the frame. It's there when you play back the tape, but televisions or older CRT screens have overscan, meaning the extreme edges of the picture, all four sides, are not seen. Usually about 5%, sometimes up to 10% of the image is gone. In older CRT TVs, this area would be covered up by the bevel of the TV. But with these fancy new computers, it's naked and now we can see the frame's naughty bits. What I love about these techniques is there's often two or more ways of creating effects. Some work better in some situations, others work better in others. So I'll show you two ways of doing this. First thing we need to do is create a new black solid. And I'm just gonna reuse this 50% gray and I'm gonna add a fill on there to black. And we'll rename this to frame right. Come on, there we go. I'll just now let's mask out just a small sliver of the edge here we're going to tap f once on the keyboard to bring up the mask feather and we'll just add like a three pixel edge on there now if you want to view this without the mask lines on here we can come down to the bottom of our composition and just click this toggle mask and shape path visibility now we can call this good and just move on but as i reviewed some older footage i can tell that this edge was dancing around a bit so let's make it boogie and here is the first way of doing it first we'll add a roughen edges to it change it to spiky these settings are just what I came up with, so feel free to toy around with them as needed. We'll come down, we'll make the border zero, make the edge harshness to about, I don't know, 1.5 for now. Um, bring the fractal influence to 0.3. Bring the scale, uh, we'll do 15 for now. Complexity, not sure if this does anything, we'll bring it up to about six. And now what I wanna do is I wanna put a expression on this offset so it constantly dances and if I just so it kind of moves at all times so what we're gonna do is we are going to add another wiggle expression to the offset turbulence by holding down alt and clicking on the stopwatch again let's type in our trusty wiggle three comma let's do something crazy like 200 so it really dances there we go. Now we could toss on a fast box blur with like a point two iteration to about one, maybe horizontal only. And the way I can explain iterations, this, the sharper the fall off of the blur, higher the number, bigger the fall off smaller the number or the sharper the fall off. So that is one way of doing it. Let's just hide that. Another way we can do it is add a wave warp to it. Go to noise. And we need to make sure the noise is at 0%. The height really, really, really low here. I got just mess around with these settings a little bit so that is another way of doing it all right i'm going to stick with my rough and edges because i feel this gives me a little bit more texture to it so what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate our frame right by Control d we're going to rename this to left we're going to tap r on the keyboard and bring up the rotation and we're going to flip it exactly 180 and we may have to adjust it here. And we'll make it a little bit smaller than the other side, just to give it a little bit more character. Sometimes VHS tapes have a bit of what I call ghosting when the camera pans. In fact, that old two-base camera I said I had, any light that would be considered clipping the white threshold would temporarily burn that light into the image. If you look at late 70s and early 80s video footage, you can see that happening. 
It would look like the lights are streaking across the frame like a bad acid trip. VHS recorders and tapes would do the same thing, creating a hazy ghosting effect. So let's create this now. Let's take our YC comp, this is why we combine them two, and let's duplicate it. Okay. Control D. And we're going to rename this YC ghosting. And this layer, grab yourself a Gaussian blur. And we're going to turn this up pretty high to like 50% and horizontal only. We're going to come down to this layer and tap T to bring up the opacity. And we're going to drop this super low, something like five for now. Now we don't really see anything, but if we tap P on the keyboard, we want to move this just slightly to the right, just a few pixels, something like, let's just add six pixels to it. So it moves over to the right there. And if we bring up the opacity, we can really see what it's doing here. And for uh, YouTube purposes, I'll make this pretty extreme, but you want to kind of keep this down low. And all these little tiny assets that we're adding to it, they add up. Now let's put what I would call tape wobbles over the entire frame, where it's kind of wavy throughout the whole thing. And we're going to do that by coming up to our project, and we're going to bring down another adjustment layer. And let's put this right underneath our color correction. Again, let's change it to an adjustment layer. Rename this to tape, wobble, full frame. And again, let's take our trusty old wave warp and put it down here. We're going to change the wave type to smooth noise and take the wave height down super low, like two. And we're going to bring this wave width pretty high to like 500. We're going to pin it to all edges and we can do high. And we need to make sure that it is moving up and down, not side by side. So let's take our direction and turn it to zero. So it's up and down. And you can see just a slight wave wobble on it. Like it's an older kind of stretched out tape a little bit. Um, let's add one more thing to this and let's add some interlacing lines. You know, the, the upper and lower field separating. It's especially noticeable when the camera pans or there's fast movement in the frame. So let's quickly create that effect. And it's super easy. Uh, let's select our YC comp and we are going to add a grid effect onto it. And let's take the center point, drop down and change it to width and height sliders only. We want to change the width something super, super high, like 3000. Let's do 3000 for now. And the height to like two and the border to one. Now we have this center line here and what we can do is we can come over to our anchor point here and we can just change this first number to zero and that'll push it all the way to the left side of the frame or you can move it completely off. As long as it's off the frame, we're good. Um, let's come down to the blend mode and change this to stencil alpha. All right, so it looks pretty, pretty gnarly right now. So what we need to do is we're going to take our YC comp and we're going to control D and duplicate it. And we're going to come to the very, very front, and I'm going to tap plus key on the keyboard and just go as far as I can. And on this bottom layer, I'm going to push this over one frame, one frame only. Bring this down. Now it still looks like crap. We are going to, one more time, duplicate our bottom layer, YC comp, one more time. And on this very bottom one, we are going to just delete the effect. And what that'll do is that'll give us some faux interlacing lines. Super, 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 super easy. Cool. In the next video, we're going to do a bunch of various tape damages. Uh, it'll be super fun. If you found any of this helpful or useful, please consider subscribing to this channel. It'll help a lot. My name is Tim with Mars Go Home. And until next time, stay rad, stay cool, stay creative. Want to skip the line and make grandma proud? An After Effects template file will be available to purchase for a killer low price. Don't want After Effects? Then try out the Sweet Premiere Pro Mogart file. Dynamically adjust the color. Handcraft your desired degradation. Take hold of the pure awesome power and control the camera date, time, and much, much more. Carefully crafted to give you, the creator, all the knobs and doohickeys so you can dial in your own unique look. Get one or get it all. Visit MarsGoHome.com for more information. Thanks, Thanks Mars, Mars Go Home. Home.